I think so. 24 by 40. That's 40 foot one and a half, so as long as we're that long at least. Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to talk a little bit about this slab prep. So we're here doing a 40 by 24 by 6 inch thick concrete slab. The homeowners hired us to do a couple slabs here. Actually, we got a little 20 by 18 patio slab we're doing out on the other side of the house. But today we're just getting this formed up and I just wanted to talk about the slab. We do a ton of these slabs. These 6 inch slabs are all that we really need to do for a type of garage that's going up here. This is just gonna be a single story truss garage, not super heavy. What's going in the garage is gonna be uh, like an RV. He's gonna put his tractor in here. He's gonna put his lawnmower in here. And because it'll be six inches thick on this type of gravel base, he'll be able to park his truck in here, his car in here if he wants to. Now the gravel base was actually done by the homeowner. He's done some stuff like this before. You can see what the land looks like off, off there to the left. So he kind of grubbed off the loom, the grass, got rid of that, dug down about 18 inches. And he put in about 12 inches of this like crushed rock type of gravel base, sub base, and he compacted it really hard. We had a really hard time driving the pins in this stuff. It was packed down so hard. But what's really good about this type of sub base is it's permeable. So when it rains, you know, water's going to kind of run through it and drain out and it's not going to puddle up on it. It could rain on this all day and you won't see any puddles here. So the reason for that, we do a lot of slabs on sub bases just like this here in Maine, is, you know, we get a lot of freeze thaw cycles from November to March. And if your sub base is going to hold moisture and then it freezes, it is a really good chance it's going to heave on you. Well, this type, you can see the gravel mixed in with a crushed rock right there. This type of sub base isn't going to heave because it's not gonna hold any water. So if you think that, well, why isn't there any footings under this, you know, around the edges or down the middle and crosswise, a slab design like this doesn't need it. It's not, there's not enough weight on it to, to require those big thick footings. Now, is it okay to put them if you want to? Yeah, sure it is. And we do slabs like that too around here. But we've, I've done literally hundreds of these types of slabs, six inch six, thick slabs for garages over the years and I've never had to see I've never seen one torn out as long as they're prepped right if the gravel's done right then you're going to be just fine and then the guy doing the slab as long as he knows what he's doing and installs it correctly uses the right concrete mix uh, pours it at the right slump uses the right mix design knows how to finish it you know I've never had any problems so I know you guys do different types of slabs all over the country and you know, if you're pouring on different sub bases, maybe you're pouring on a lot of sand, maybe you're pouring even on some clay. Maybe you need those types of grade beams in the slab itself, but here on a slab like this, on this type of gravel, you don't need them. You know, so it's not going to all crack up and be junk in a year like a lot of you guys say in the comments. It's just not. And I've done it for 45 years, so I think that should be some type of proof. And I wouldn't be on here putting the slab on a video for pe other people to watch if it's not going to hold up. So I'm just showing you like what's possible out there. Now code, code enforcement is all over the place in our state. Every town, every city, the code enforcement guys seem to have a little bit different opinion. This guy was actually pretty cool. This is a pretty small town we're in. And, you know, we definitely check with them to make sure the slab we're putting in is is okay with the code guy in that town. And he was he was perfectly fine with this type of slab going in like this for base, based on what it's going to be used for. Now, it's not going to be a heated garage. Like I said, it's just going to be basically for storage like a typical garage slab is. Now, we got the boards all laid out. Uh, we usually like to have, and, and again, if like if you want to learn how to set up slabs like this, I have a step-by-step -step course in the Concrete Underground or my Concrete Slab course, which is in the in the uh, information below the video. So you can just click on that and find that there. 
Well, basically what we like to do is, you know, we get the forms all laid out, get them screwed together. I like having the forms a little bit longer than the actual slab. So when we screw the corners together, we can run the corner by a little bit and then we get everything lined up just right. And then we'll measure out like we're doing now, mark the boards at exactly the slab dimensions and screw the boards together based on our marks. So that's kind of how we get started. Uh, one another thing we do is like before we usually even get to this point if we think the slab if we think the subgrade isn't that level you know I'll definitely check that with a laser first all right so after we get all the corners screwed together we take a look at it. we step back take a look and see if it's kind of on the gravel pad where we want it because we got to get it square so Kind of looks like the back could go a little bit that way, huh? Looks like it was meant to go that way a little bit, but... I think so, yeah. You push in on this board a little bit, and I'm going to slide the back about a foot this way. Yeah. That doesn't look too bad compared to the house. It doesn't have to be square with the house, really, but... Looks a little better. Forty five foot nine inches. This is a lot longer, a lot longer. 47 foot 5 Go about 5 inches that way I'm gonna go back about 4 or 5 inches this way 46 7 and a quarter Seven and a quarter All right, so that gets us square so we'll We'll stake the corners so the corners don't move. Then we'll run our strings around like we always do. And then we can get the rest of the boards all nice and straight. Hi. So we just went corner to corner there to get the slab squared. And that's kind of how we've always done it. I know there's a formula you can use to get it the exact dimension, but... Most of the time, you know, we can get it pretty close to square just by eye. This one was off a little bit, so it just took manipulating the boards a little bit to get it perfectly square and in place. Sometimes on jobs too, the homeowner or the contractor we're working for will have actual pins in the ground where they want the, the two front corners, the exact corners of the front, and then we square it to those two front corners. This, this one, this, this guy just said, you know, hey, fit it on that gravel pad best you think, and, you know, I'll, I'll live with it. You can see how hard those pins are going. Those are metal pins when he's using a three-pound sludge right there. And those pins are going in pretty hard. This gravel was packed really, really good. Now I'm running the string around, and that's basically what we do. We like putting the string right in the middle of the form. That's just the way we've done it. You can put it on the front edge. You can put it on the back edge. You can do whatever you want. Do it your way. This is our way. It's worked for us. And we'll just eyeball that string right in the middle of the form as we're pounding the stakes in. A lot of times we'll even pound the boards in just a little bit from being perfectly straight. So, because we know when the concrete gets up against the board, it's going to want to put pressure out on the board. So if they're in a little bit, that's actually to our advantage. And then if they don't push out with the concrete, we can just tap them out a little bit as we pour. After we get everything squared, staked in place, next thing is to do is to, you know, set the laser up. And we got to establish, we got to establish top of slab. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm going to get my DeWalt laser out. Self-leveling laser. This thing just screws into the tripod. Hit the on button. As long as the tripod is somewhat level, it'll self-level itself, start spinning. Then I can use my receiver to read the grade beam off it. This is the fastest way that I know how to set grades to slabs like this. All right, so now what I'm doing is I've got my, my laser level set up. I'm going to go around and just check the dirt grade, get an average height of the dirt. 
by using the receiver like this. It's right on 36 right there. And then I can raise my concrete grade up six inches from the average. About 37. So we have a lot of 36s and 37s. We'll take an average 36 and a half. We'll go six over that, which would be 30 and a half. And that's what we'll set the top of the forms to. 30 and a half, about a six inch thick slab. Up a little bit there. Yep. Yeah, it's right there, Luke, yep. As you can see, we were using a drill driver and I like those two and a half inch deck screws, the T25s. Those hold the forms really tight and they're a lot easier to strip afterwards too when you come back and you can reuse them over and over again. I know they're a little bit more expensive than nails, but we'll, we'll get 10, 15 uses out of one screw as long as we're careful with them and don't strip them out. So we're gonna go around, this is how we go around. We'll lift the boards up to grade or if we have to dig down the, the gravel in a little area to, to move the form down a little bit, we'll just dig under the form. But we like getting everything set right to top a grade if we can. And if the slab's out a little bit, as far as the gravel, if, it's, if it needs to be shimmed a little bit, then the homeowner said he'd just drop a little bit more in with his bucket, you know, rake it out, compact it, get it ready for us. Um, this this was, wasn't too bad, actually. It was a little bit high over there where the guys are standing, and then it was just a little bit low over here in this front corner on the right. Well, there wasn't much had to be done. It was actually pretty close, as you could see when I was shooting grades with it. Definitely something we could live with. We've shown up to gravel pads like this, and they've been six inches off. You know, we you can kind of tell if you do it for a living when you drive in the driveway if something's that far off. And uh, we just basically turn around, go back home, and tell the guy, hey, when you fix it and get it level, give us a call. We'll come back. But when something's only an inch off like this, you know, half inch higher or half inch low, that's actually pretty good in my book. Especially if the homeowner does it himself. That's basically as easy as it is to, to lift the forms up and set them to grade. I mean, one guy holding a grade stick like that with a laser, the other guy coming right behind him with a screw gun, and things things get set to grade pretty quick. So we like doing it that way. All right, that's the forms for this slab. Now we're gonna move over. They got a patio over here. We're gonna set up it's 20 by 18. So where we're really thick here, he's gonna sprinkle in a little bit more gravel for us. We'll rake it out just to get it closer to six inches. So this is poor day. We brought the wire and the rebar back with us uh, on poor day. We didn't have it with us the day we were setting up, and. Again, if you're not a subscriber and you want to see the pour here and you want to see that other patio, that'll be on another video. So please consider subscribing. And if you want to learn how to do this, if you're thinking of doing something like this yourself, or if you just want to learn how to do concrete, you know, consider joining the Concrete Underground. I got all kinds of training videos in there that teach you how to do stuff like this. Right now, we're just getting the wire all laid out. We don't have chairs to put under this. Uh, we'll just pull the wire up into the concrete as we pour. We've had really good luck with it that way. And again, the, like the wire in this case is just going to hold the concrete together. If the, if the When we power trowel this, right after we get power troweled, and we're going to saw cut uh, contraction joints, expansion contraction joints in the slab. So we don't have trouble with slabs just cracking up and breaking up. I mean, that you, you got to have really bad subgrade issues if that's going to happen to a concrete slab, if you know what you're doing as a concrete guy. Now, if you don't know what you're doing as, as a concrete person and you just pour concrete in here and you pour it really wet uh, then yeah you're gonna have the slab crack up because you're pouring the concrete way too wet it's gonna it's gonna shrink up on you and it's that you know pouring it too wet weakens the concrete well, then you might have issues with it cracking but we don't have those type of issues because we know what we're doing we know what type of uh, concrete mix design to use 
and we put special chemicals in the concrete to actually help strengthen it even more. So our, our slabs don't just crack up. If, they, if something cracks here, then it's probably because something moved, something settled or something heaved. And like I told you, again, a gravel base like this, if it's compacted properly, isn't going to settle. It's not going to wash away. And if it doesn't hold water under it, then it's not going to freeze under it and heave. So there's very, very minimal chances that this thing will crack, other than in the sod joint that we saw in it after we get done power troweling. So wire, the wire in here is, is good. I mean, it does, it does help keep it, hold it together if it cracks. Uh, it, it does add a little bit of uh, load transfer, load transfer to it because it is reinforcement. But if you're looking for something to really uh, super supersize your strength in here, you'd probably want to tie a matter rebar in here, maybe you know a foot on center, 16 inches on center, get it up on rebar chair so it's up in the middle of the slab. And that's really going to help you distribute you know load from driving really heavy equipment on something like this. But no heavy equipment here. You saw the size of the guy's tractor. You can see his car back there. <laughs> Um, and then his, his, his little camper isn't very heavy either, so this thing's going to hold anything this guy has, and it's going to hold up for a really long time. So we're using the fiberglass rebar around the edges. We like to tie a double row rebar around the edges. That also locks in the wire, too. It ties the wire together really good. And then we'll tie the wire, too, so that doesn't move as we pour. And then we just you know, show up early in the morning and get ready for pour day. So that'll be on the next video. Make sure you like and subscribe. Come on back, see the next one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.